Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. Uh, we're doing a Worlds, world, update a Worlds tier list, which is going to happen. I guess this will come out Tuesday, so Worlds happening later the same week. Yep. Joined by my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-compatriot, Rob. Oh. Uh, we have not uploaded as much lately. I was uh, pretty deftly sick for the last <laughs> Yeah. I saw really you. really got better a couple days ago. Yeah, for Battle Heart. In, in was... the person. <laughs> Yeah, I was judging on Saturday, and I was still, like, very, very sick. Yeah. But I still went on Saturday to do it, and then Sunday I was just dead. So Power, I power even, through it. Yeah, that must have taken like, a toll on you. But, uh... Yeah, it took a toll. That's one way of saying it. But uh, that's, that's that's okay. I am more or less-ish back to it. Let's uh, call it 90%, 90%. Yeah, just some just some ear congestion. That's about it. So what's, it's, it's more or less time for another tier. I'm in the right state of mind I think for a so. tier list video. We just had the Living Legends um, update, so we know that yes. Lexi has made it over the finish line most recently. Yes. Uh, Briar's been there for a little longer, but uh, yes. those are the two heroes that we wiped from this tier list. And we've added the uh, the latest three. We've got Teklavasen, Dash Io is on here, and Max is way down here. Yeah, so Max on the other side. Updated. Too. Yep, so we've got an updated um, list. Okay, let's, let's start by saying... Our disclaimers that this list is, this list is obviously not going to be it might be different from other lists you've seen it is based on uh tournaments we've seen results uh testing uh different different sources of information kind of taken with a grain of salt but of course uh events mm -hmm. and recent recent things like the calling and such especially the yep. one in melbourne will be heavier in you know heavier waiting um so that that being said we can start off with what arachne is that we'll go alphabetical basically yeah let's go start with arachne all right, I have basically no way to put on, on Arachne. I know he can basically fatigue a deck if he puts his mind to it, but as the decks have gotten yeah. more aggressive, um, it's kind of hard to say where he fits. Yeah, He's kind of like a one-trick pony in that sense. I don't really know if he has much weight to being able to win. It's it's kind of like, oh, sure. you lack testing into an Arachne, and you see an Arachne, so you, you might lose. <laughs> That's basically what it yeah. comes down to sometimes. Um but yeah, I'm more of like a on like the one trick side. I don't really think he has much of a much of a play. Yeah, I think Aragni, the main issue he still has that hasn't changed with any of the new sets is his, he's textless hero. Like his hero text is pretty much <laughs> a null, like a null. Doesn't really yeah. do much, uh, and he doesn't really have he doesn't have a specialized a useful specialization card. So uh, like Regicide is like yeah, I guess Poor he decided guy. into Dr Dromai. Like maybe you, you can, can get like, lucky and there. snipe a Dromai maybe because I think. <laughs> All of them at this point are running the crown. Uh, Most of them are royal at this point, but it's 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 a pretty good chance that if they see an Arachne, they might just not run the royal <laughs> it's part. It's so a good point. It's, yeah, it's why like, take a chance? Yeah. Yeah, so I think the issue is Arachne had uh, had a little bit of game into some decks like um, Dash, like a heavy boost deck, decks that uh, drew a lot of cards, banish a lot of cards themselves. Like, yeah, so like a fatigue plan, more susceptible to fatigue. So things like Lexi, but not even yep. in the meta anymore. So I think I uh, I, I lost to an Arachne in uh, Battle Hardened Vancouver <laughs> as Dash. It doesn't happen as, as Dash. Dash. Yeah, like an yeah. aggressive boost Dash. Like it does. It does have a place. I just think for worlds, you'd be remiss to not find a whole lot of decks that are just going to smack you around. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to get really lucky here. So, so what do you think? D, D or C for D. now? D probably for now, D. bottom of the barrel. Probably D. Yeah, probably D for now. All right, Azalea. Azalea. Yeah, so yeah, I think she got bullseye back, right? She got bullseye back. Yep. So that could be uh, a very big push in, in her favor because now she can <clears throat> sometimes play three arrows per turn, or you know, at least once she can get an yeah, easy. bolt and shot, uh, bolt yeah. into bracers. You know, it's pretty good. So she's probably gotten better since Lexi's like, gone out. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Like getting bullseye back is like super huge uh not only to even make like a dominated arrow slightly bigger if that's like the use case right um to get over yeah. like a certain break point that's true too. Uh, if yeah. you need to go for game uh or like with bolt and shot of course to <clears throat> if you don't have a buff specifically it's even better right because then you if you don't have a buff you can you still bolt and shot get that buff, reload get the go yeah and, and yeah. exactly and, and go for a wider turn so mm -hmm. azalea definitely got a buff i think when you look at the meta i think Azalea is a very tricky hero to rate as S tier, and I say that because yep. she it, she does have like the She's removal flawed. problem where yeah. I mean all the heroes are flawed, True. but the <laughs> issue no, is no that she heroes, yeah. it's a little more obvious. Yeah, she, 
Yeah, she has the same runeplay problem where like she'll draw she could draw hands that are all arrows or all buffs and she just yeah. loses all sense of tempo if she had any to begin with, right? So she does have like imperfect hands and they do come up quite a bit. And to get consistency in something like worlds, um <laughs> it is a mixed format. So it lends more credibility to Azalea because you're playing a CC games True. over so the cross you can just tournament. Get lucky. Because you're not playing 13 rounds of CC. As opposed to, like, calling CC, correct? Like, as opposed to the calling, I think Azalea is a better choice for a mixed format because you can target certain decks. And the decks mm -hmm. that Azalea wants to target are the ones where they're more prone to disruption. They don't have a lot of armor, not a lot of D-reacts, things like Katsu. Uh, mm -hmm. Ninja in general, uh, pretty good. So yeah. I, I think she's also, like, a generically strong deck. She has a lot of good arrows now. Uh, I think her... I think she can kind of get a bit too run over by Mechanologists at the moment. And really, the main thing I'm considering are the two other decks that seem to be coming back out in force are Bravo and Dromai. And yeah, Dromai is a bit of an issue. Yeah, I mean, Azalea can win. It's not an impossible matchup for Dromai, but I don't think I want to be playing a whole shit ton of Dromai in all my CC yeah. games as Azalea, unless I have a very specific tech deck that allows me to go extra wide or... Uh, or put on like enough damage fast enough because you so you essentially have to be going you can't give a dromai a turn off right like if they pop a bunch of dragons azalea does not have a great way of like Lexi did with attacking Voltaire, multiple um, dragons the cleanup is tough and ash wings yeah, are a bit of a nightmare because what do yeah. you put into ash, an ash, ash, really? ash wings are a nightmare you really yeah. do need a bunch of poppers so i can see azalea's teching with more poppers yeah to deal with the dromai matchup uh, what was that called? The yes. six power arrow. Get a few of those in. Get your battering bolt. Yeah. Battering bolt. Yeah, that's right. Now, that unfortunately doesn't work into Bravo. So in Bravo, you might want to run more defensive package. You might want to run the stack. Uh, and I, I don't know if you're gonna have enough space in your Azalea deck to deal with both Bravo and Dromai, and also just be ready for the rest of the field because it is a, well, it is a world. It was a like the highest level event. People are still gonna be bringing different decks, right? And yeah. so I, I don't know. if Azalea can toolbox enough to, to really get there. So I think I'm going to leave her an A tier. Sure. Uh, she does have some favorable matchups. She's a very strong hero, however, mm -hmm. into the meta. And then when Dash, like Dash IO coming up, um, I think she has like, I think she can have a fairly good matchup in Dash IO with Run the Ledgers, only allowing you to do one action, kind of negating a lot of the wide combo turns, yeah. right? Because even if, even if Dash IO gets a bunch of action points, it doesn't mean anything if you can only do one action with Brand the exactly. Ledger, right? She has a very unique tool that is very good into a lot of heroes in the in the on the field. So, yes. she, so I, she'll I she'll do breaking out. Yeah, I can see her yeah. breaking out and doing well, but the consistency is a bit of an issue yeah. for me. And she's made top eight in a few of the most recent events, so she she's definitely showing some uh, some results. Yeah, not not as popular as I thought she would be, but she mm -hmm. is definitely still up there, and she should be considered to be part of the pool. I think so. All right, next we've got Bolton. Um, so since, um, I guess it was the Dust Till Dawn expansion, he did get some stuff. Yeah, he, got some, you know, he got some stuff. He got a sizable increase in his card pool. A lot of stuff that allowed him to, as you charge, you get an added benefit, right? The cards that get added to soul that give you like yeah. either a courage or, or, or whatnot. So he's gotten improvements. I just don't think that they really fixed his underlying issue that he just has... Yeah negative card card advantage all the time and you're really setting up for yeah. one big turn so I, I i think he's still you know he's still bottom i think we might have ranked him c or d last time i think he just stays there yeah i mean he got one piece out of um his expansion card legendary the warband of baloney baloney i'm yeah. pretty sure it's called warband of baloney yeah and uh, that essentially just fixes, again, they're, they're hammering home the same issue where, like, if you don't have a good opening charge card, they're trying to negate the negativeness. Because before, when you mm -hmm. didn't have a source to charge, like a take flight or something like that, your yeah. turn was just bad. Yeah. Like, you yeah. could have raided, you could, it was just, it was just a bad turn, right? Yeah. So I think they're trying to ne negate those shitty hands as much as they they're, can. They're adding some consistency, like this. right? He gets yeah. a little more consistent with this. There's a lot of legendary pieces at this point. Like he's got Spirit of Arena as a legendary. Uh, Warband is now legendary. Yeah. Uh, he's got the his just chest piece that he got in. Um, that was quite was big. Dynasty? Soul Bond Resolve, well, I think. Dynasty. Soul Bond Resolve. I forgot what. Oh, that's Dust Till Dawn. No, that was yeah, Dust Till Dawn. Dawn. Yeah, yeah. And Bright Lights was the Warband. So he, he's getting a lot of help. I just don't know if it makes any. Like I, I think he could do a bunch of damage, but he's still pretty prone to disruption. I yeah, that's a big interesting one. Interesting the lists. I think the best lists out there are the ones who can adequately 
target some of the better decks. So if you could find a Bolton list yeah. that does well into like Bravo and Dromai, um, and it has an okay an okay spread amongst like mechanologists and stuff like that, like regular Dash and Dash IO, I think this is an okay spot. However, I don't know if that list exists. Right. Uh, and I think he's a little bit too copian at the moment. Even even for like an event like Worlds <laughs> seems very unlikely for Bolton to be considered high, highly in the field essentially without any like reasonable disruption of his own yeah all right so c tier for now yeah i'll see him in c tier sounds good okay bravo coming back into the meta well he's been in the meta for a little while he's always been the unsung hero always overshadowed yeah. by the big three um yeah now with lexi gone do you see him improving or is he mostly just gonna stick to that a tier level yeah, Bravo's relationship with Lexi like kind of changed. Like people found out, uh, I guess Pablo Pentor found out, uh, among <laughs> some of the other players at that event, yeah. found out that Bravo can fatigue Lexi if Lexi's not expecting it. And then it kind of went back and forth. Once uh, you know, Lexi's you know. Like, oh shit, now I need to run Quiver of Abyssal Depths and, yeah. and Remembrance and shit like that, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like Bravo is uh, the, Bravo is a good hero or the or a better hero when people don't know he's coming. <laughs> and the, the issue is Surprise that right attack. now... If you, if you look at the last couple events, a pretty big portion of those events are filled with a lot of Bravo players, especially in the last. Uh, I, it's not not the greatest of metrics. Don't don't hold me to this, but a lot of the American yeah. and just Battle Hardens PTI events, a lot, a lot of Bravos coming out of the woodworks. Even even the calling, we're seeing some Bravos, especially at the higher tables. I think the issue with Bravo is that um, his consistency is top tier. You don't get much more consistent than Bravo. I mean, mm -hmm. Bravo is the pillar of consistency. The issue is that. You now have some matchups popping up that weren't necessarily great for you, and they're very taxing to navigate. So the Dromai matchups are actually quite difficult. Um, Even though you've got all the problem. poppers, right? Yeah, you would think so. You would think that it's like okay, but the problem is Dromai is te like if there's a matchup that Dromai is focused on, it's beating Bra Bravo. Like this is what Dromais are going to focus on. Yeah, especially for Worlds. Like if you're a Dromai player and you cannot have a, and you do not have a plan into Bravo then you're just going to get smacked. Like, there's going to be Bravos there, right? And I think because Bravo is such a known entity at this point, and people know this exists, and they will test against it, there's not a ton Bravo can do in this pool to really stretch too far out of his consistent, like, 60, 70 card base outside of maybe 20-ish, 15 to 20, if that, sideboard tech choices, like things like maybe out muscle and crap like that. I don't know if you want to go more aggressive, but things like, mm -hmm. you know, cookie cutter, sigil zealous like a lot of it is just so proven the the only benefit he really got was civic steps which is a very big improvement is um, it the boots the two armor two armor two the armor, two armor boots. boots yeah three armor. very strong so yeah. you've just gained two more life and this hero already had a shit ton of life to begin with with all the other pieces of armor yeah they completed so, the fridge the eight armor fridge yeah so i i think i well i i put i i very much hesitate to put him in s tier i think a tier top of a tier is definitely he is definitely one of the big challengers to the map yeah. because you gotta is, consider him for sure he is solid into the field and he is powerful like his dominated effects are no joke like crippling crush yeah. cnc pummel and he's got disruption to handle a lot of the aggressive decks too so if you're if they're not careful yes. they'll get crippling crush spinal cord crushed and it's it's very exactly. hard to claw back if bravo keeps putting that pressure on and you know, yeah. once once the wheels start turning with that kind of stuff, an aggressive deck just falls. So yeah, and and the the other piece that uh, kind of the rat the rise of Dash IO, which we're kind of going to mention, I'll mention briefly, and then we'll move into is that uh, Dash IO is very susceptible to disruption. Runs a lot of items, can draw a bunch of non-item hands, poor mm -hmm. blocking hands, and uh, Dash IO needs a couple big turns to really pop off and not just get fatigued because the main way Dash IO gets fatigued. Uh, sorry, the way, the main way Dash IO loses is getting fatigued, right? Because you're drawing cards with you're Tome, always, with High Octane, you're boosting, yeah, boosting you're getting items lot. off the top. Yeah, you need to win off those couple windows you have with Max Velocity, um, you know, things like that. And so I think Bravo also has a pretty good matchup to that. And Bravo can also randomly fatigue you. He doesn't even need to build fatigue. He can still have such good efficiency with his attacks yeah, that he's it's, able to... It's baked in, right? And Anothos is coming yeah. in for six for basically for free because you just pitch two cards and you're good. Uh, it's very yep. hard to contend with. So I think, yeah, he's built for fatigue. If you're a Up deck a. that, you know, can't really deal with fatigue, then he'll be an issue for sure. Yeah. Um, so we'll move into Dash IO. I kind of mentioned a little yeah. bit about Dash IO. I mean, she um, she has one one notable run to the finish line, I guess, when she, I think it was calling finals. Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne, calling Melbourne. 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 Yeah, not, was, not quite the finish line, just right before it, the second two, place finish. I think there was, 
maybe there wasn't two top eights. Maybe it was just the one guy who top eight Thomas. I think it was just but there one. Was not, yeah. There was another dash IO that was doing well, who was like doing well in day just two. Missed, I think just they missed the top eight, I guess. Yeah, possibly, but they, they they were still definitely doing well, and a lot of other players have picked up this deck as uh, mm -hmm. because of it, just because of her kind of insane just damage looking... ceiling combo potential. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because she's a combo deck, like at, at its core, you're not really like old dash. You're you're yeah. Yeah. you're not really running the um, yeah, like the amount pistol of action and... point. Yeah, like you're you're not because you got symbiosis shot just shoots for free to yeah. get around the resource limitation, and you're running things like backup protocol to get your attacks back if you have to like block with them or things like that. So you've got uh, less. So you've got less consistency. But it's kind of negated your, a little bit. Your explosiveness bit because you play increases. Off the top. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're you less can play consistent. Off the top. You can exactly, and that that basically counts as a free card. It's an extension of your yeah. hand. Um, if you set up correctly, you can do some insane damage. But like you said, disruption is going to be uh, really hard to overcome. So if she doesn't yeah. tech specifically for that kind of stuff, uh, it, it might be hard. But it's proven. I mean, she's she's done. <laughs> she's gone the distance at this point. Um, yeah. I just I just don't know how many people have played her and did not make top eight. I can't imagine mm. the pool not was that, that large. Yeah. Uh, the pool was not that very big. There's, there wasn't that many people playing her, and I yeah. don't know if she's been on people's radar long enough for a big pool of players to uh, bring her to Worlds. However, I think people have had enough time to digest her that they will definitely mm -hmm. be testing into her. Now, That's whether good they're going to be whether they're going to be happy with their matchup spread to bring it to an event like Worlds. I'm not sure. Uh, I I personally think she's she's got some pretty glaring issues yeah. against even decks like Reinar that could just block her out. Um, mm -hmm. I think just like, and with, without a doubt thing. too, um, she's basically right now the most popular hero because of the event because of calling Melbourne. I think right now it's like people are all looking at yeah. her. Uh, she's in the spotlight. Is what I meant to say. So yeah, which is a great. You, you don't want to be in the count, spotlight. You can count on people bringing her for sure. There's gonna be a big representation. I think of her unless people find that in their testing there's like a fatal flaw that they're like, okay, yes. maybe I shouldn't play her, but I'll be ready for her anyway. Um, so regardless, yeah. fame isn't good in this case, and I don't think she'll do yeah. as well as we've seen at the calling Melbourne. I think nobody nobody expected that at the calling Melbourne. And they didn't really test into it. They didn't, yeah. they didn't know what the damage output was. Uh, she can do 30, 30 damage turns. Like it's it's a thing. You got tomes. You've got high octane. Like high octane. Yeah. Uh, tome max velocity turns where you keep getting like uh, points on symbiosis. You keep getting action points and you just like run at them. Keep like firing. fully charged symbiosis is twelve damage off six six shots if you can if you can run it right. Mm -hmm. And if you can get like an item off the top, you get an action point there. So there's more sources there. But yeah. Again, yeah. she's a little bit a little bit more frail uh, because she she runs less defensive tools and she is a little bit h higher ceiling, lower floor. Now, whether people are okay with that in uh, eight, I think it's eight rounds of CC. I think it's seven, seven, right? I think it's right. four CC, three draft, four CC, three draft, I think mm -hmm. um, for 14 total. So if you're yeah. okay with that for eight rounds, uh, I, I think it's pretty reasonable, but yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to be like the front of... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking like just, low A or high B at this point. I don't, I don't think S, put, uh, but you know. I'd put her at high B, and the reason is because I think she's a lot more complicated to play. She's very, very difficult to play, and I don't know if people have been able to put in the reps needed to play her. At that level? Without, yeah, with all the micro decisions that you're making turn after turn, I yeah. don't know if people have had enough time, even Worlds players, to split between yeah. what they thought they were going to bring and then was... this new hero that they didn't know existed. Yeah. I think we got to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be good players, but because she's new, oh, it, yeah, takes, it takes time, obviously, to to learn the hero. Might um, not be comfortable enough. Yep, I agree. Okay, yep, high B works for me. Uh, we got the old dash. old dash now, so um, I guess dash hasn't really changed all that much besides the Hanabi build, I think. Um, yeah. So you can go the more aggressive build that uh, utilizes Hanabi Blaster, boost three times, Hanabi for five, overpower. Um, quite strong. Um, I don't know if it, it's probably not as strong as Dash IO is at this point, because Dash mm -hmm. IO can give uh, has a higher ceiling in terms of damage. But that version of Dash with the Happy Blaster is more consistent. You have consistent boosting yeah. cards, um, but it does fatigue itself also. So same problem as Dash IO. You fatigue yourself, but Dash can still go the pistol package if you want to. So you can choose to go a more um, consistent defensive build if you want certain heroes 
or you can go super yeah. aggressive if you want. So she saw, she always has yeah. that going for her, which is pretty nice. So it's hard to put her anywhere lower than B. Uh, and she has yeah. some results. I think it might have been calling um, type A. I think there were like a few dashes, or I'm thinking of another one. But um, dash is still up there in the top eights somewhere. So yeah. I don't know. I'm probably going to put her either yeah. like before or after dash IO somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah, I think what regular dash has going for her is her flexibility is very good. Her toolboxy play, the fact that once you flip this hero, your opponent doesn't really know what build you're on because there's a bunch of viable builds. You could be on the more mid rangey build. You could be on a Hanabi boost. You can be on regular boost. So you don't need to be playing Hanabi. Um, you could be on like the tree froggy fatigue kind of dash where you're playing a shit ton of D-Rex. Yeah, you get yeah. more cards, uh, the four the four block card, the firewall. Like you've got yeah, more tools to do that play. Uh, I know in the battle hard and recently, uh, I think Rose um, brought that deck to second place against an Icelander. Um, mm -hmm essentially running through the gauntlet of a bunch of bravos and decks like this uh i can see them doing quite well against decks that go tall too like possibly azalea and stuff and uh also yeah. possibly dromai Sa same idea because you're, you're just sitting there and you're just being value like creating value yeah and pistol's great for can. dealing with dragons as well yeah so if you can get your package out uh sooner rather than later it's a great deck so i think because of her flexibility she's probably like high b tier I don't know yeah. if she's strong enough to be a low A tier uh, as far as the world's meta is concerned, but because I, I don't, I think very good dash players, like I think the dash from my matchup is depending on who's playing. It's very skill intensive. I've mm -hmm. seen it go both ways depending on who's playing the deck. Uh, it's definitely a matchup that people are going to be testing on both sides. Uh, both hero, both of those heroes can win. I think the Bravo matchup is also very skill intensive. I think most, mm -hmm. most matchups for dash are skill intensive. So yeah. I think it's definitely... In the eye of the uh, of, of the, the, of the player, here. yeah, the pilot. Okay, yeah. So high B is fine but with overall, me. Overall, yeah, I think All it's right. fine. Let's go with Dory next. Um, I don't know. If she's C uh, I don't know if she's B tier. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't really know where Dory sits. I think there was one instance, might have been uh, there was a call. I think there was one, or maybe it's a battle hard, and she was top eight. But I've only seen her once in the leaderboards. I put leaderboards. her. I, I put I put her above Bolton, and it's not uh, to yeah. say that any hero in C tier can't top eight in events uh, strength of schedule is a hell of a drug i mean it's yeah. it's it's a thing where if you just get every matchup that you want uh going up there you just have a higher chance and in a, an event where it's a mixed event putting them in a b and c is, is all relative to to what you end up facing right but it's just against the yeah. field we think is going to show up i think exactly. dory dory's issue is that she is very good at blocking you just she does have a fridge now, with all of that, why don't you just play Bravo with in built-in disruption and has the same mm -hmm. stuff? You know what I mean? So I yeah, think a very good Dory player that knows all of these matchups can do well, but I think you're going to work so hard for all of your wins that I think there are just better options for you. Like, I, I don't know what matchup you're really just like, I want to see eight of this. Like, I, I can't really <laughs> think of any. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, there's not a ton of flexibility. There are tech cards that you can run. Uh, that I've seen depending on what meta you're expecting. Like if you're seeing a more slow meta versus a faster meta uh, and you're trying to outrace, but I, I don't think Dory really outraces any of the aggro decks that well anymore. Right. Uh, she didn't really get that many tools. She did get uh, Emboldening Blade or whatever. They can like snipe a D-React at Arsenal, I oh, guess. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's fine. I, I don't it's okay. Really know. I think it's a blue zero cost or uh, maybe yeah, one yeah, cost yeah, yeah. or something, but it's, you know, you'd probably play it anyway because it's a zero blue cost uh blue zero cost yeah, block it might three it might replace one of your crappy blue zeros but like yeah. i don't know dory's average hand value is just so so mediocre compared yeah. to all of these heroes that we're putting up there that can where her consistency is okay but at the end of the day it's like yeah. you're not you really do need to uh swing for the fences here if you want to close yeah and you have to you have to rely on that constant um dawn blade upgrade right it's like a kind of like just kind of curving up getting yeah. counter after counter and yeah. you know you you could win if the aggro deck just does not block you ever, um, mm -hmm. but it's just so easy to counter once you get a big yeah. D react or you just block her out and then it's like okay no counters anymore back to square mm -hmm. one it's it's tough. Yeah no that's 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 fair I do think that like she can do well I just would not be super unless I have like a stupid amount of reps on Dory and that's my main then yeah. I don't really think I'd bring her to this event. Sounds good. Okay, next we've got probably our first S tier, uh, Dromai. So, you know, with Lexi yeah, gone, I mean, right? Like, she's probably still up there. 
She was always she was up there even when with Lexi there, right? I mean, yeah. this 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 hero is just so annoying uh, to play against, and she got even stronger with Tome of the Imperial Flame. That card, that oh, card slaps. Yeah. Um, very good. Card's very good. It, <laughs> very good it, until it's not. Until you draw it, and then I think yeah, very one, good one of my opponents was a draw. I think they drew two tomes and they just died to the to the yeah. boost pressure, and so you know. Obviously, yeah. when it works, it's great. When it doesn't, you're drawing a non-blocking card. But uh, in her case, it, it works more often than not. Yeah. Um, it's a very good card. She has one of the kind of highest skill ceilings where uh, it's this hero rewards a lot of reps to the point where min-maxing your turns are very, very important in this deck. But there are a lot of very practiced draw my players because this hero has been mm -hmm. out since Uprising. So yeah, it's, she's been it's, yeah, good it's not since Uprising. Old. <laughs> just constantly She's up being... there. Yeah, sure. Let's let's go with that. But my <laughs> point is say, that, but yeah, yeah. Especially in the last uh five, six months specifically, a lot of players have been putting a shit ton of reps into Dromai. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of players have been trying to like beat Dro with certain uh, strategies, but Dromai always seems to find a way with her kit to overcome different strategies by adding really interesting picks and this is is this is because of draw my players uh you know finding these like the um like air air and chance picking up that cadaverous contraband mm -hmm. like, uh, like the cards that don't, nobody really expected and then <laughs> right. people are just finding new ways to like screw with her pool and it's like wow that's actually a really good card in this mm -hmm. deck it's like yeah it's a not attack oh most of your shit's not attack rakes not attack your invokes are not attacks yeah, and beyond um, that, she has the one consistent way of removing a piece of armor with Tomaltai. So like, she has that threat Tomaltai, always there. Yep. So she, like, she's she's her toolkit is just so good at dealing with so many different um, mm -hmm. decks that she just randomly beats some decks. Now that being said, there are decks that can randomly beat her. If she rolls up into like a Rhinar, I think Rhinar is definitely favored into Dromai and stuff yep. like that, where it's where it's like, oh, why don't I just take away your defense and some of your cards just don't block? I can just slaughter you. Like it's it's mm -hmm. there are explosive turns that Dromai just can't deal with. She doesn't have a lot of armor. Uh, it's like other than Furnace, it's, it's furnace, really not I a think. lot. Yeah. yeah, Crown. Um, Crown. If you're not if running you're the not, Dominion, right? If you're not running Dominion, exactly. So I think she does have weak points for sure. I don't mm -hmm. think she's like. I don't think she's as S tier as Lexi was back before Bullseye. Before the Bullseye ban, she's not as strong as that. Where that deck seemed to have no weak points, pretty much, other than like if you drew if you drew poorly, yeah, I guess. But that's like every deck in Fab, right? Yeah. So, I think she is probably the deck to beat, and probably the deck where I'm expecting the highest pool of players to be on. Yeah. Um, yeah I think but she's I'm top, not pretty much top dog of of the format. Yeah, I'm not expecting. A lot. I'm not expecting the biggest proportion of those players to be like. There's going to be a lot of like long-term Dromai players that might have just played Dromai regardless, and a lot of players that like have just gone into Dromai. Right? And that's the best deck, correct? Yeah. 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 So yeah. and you would expect that at Worlds because I figure a lot of top players they they pivot a yeah. lot into whatever deck they think is going to be the best based on their testing, based on results. Um, yes. You know, I don't think many of them have like a pet deck that they're going to take all the way to top eight. It's 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 rare. Uh, yeah. So I think that we will see a higher representation of Jeremai based on the previous LLs, based on the the events and the um you know the seedings that she's had in the past few callings and battle hardens. So yeah, she'll mm -hmm. be the top the deck to beat for sure. All right, next sure. we've got Phi. Uh, Phi's been going up. Uh, I don't know if you've felt it, but you look <laughs> Phi in eight tier, huh? I, I I think he might be an A tier. I don't know. He's uh, you're, just, you're just like I don't see any results, but I'm feeling something. <laughs> I'm the feeling it. It's in my gut. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting because think... before going to the Battle Heart in Vancouver, I actually didn't know that Fi would be so prominent. In you know, yeah, there in were all, I think there were a lot of Fies. Um, it was like Fi. I yeah, I guess so. But I was a bit surprised because in the past it was always like, oh, Fi got completely overshadowed by Katsu. Why play Fi? But now I'm just seeing yeah. more. I don't know why. So I think Phi is actually into specific matchups. Phi is just better um, than Katsu. So into Dromai, I like Phi more. Now, I think Dromai off Tome of Imperial Flame can slaughter even Phi. Right. Like Phi has some kind of bad. I, I think the key is there's less dead hands in Phi on average, and you're but you're trading a lot of your like value hands. So what I mean by compared that is... Compared to Katsu, like, you mean, blocks. right? Compared to Katsu, yeah. So when you're dealing with like, you get more two blocks however more of your hands do more 
Whereas Katsu, you could totally have just like a, like a, right, a blue super combo good, card. yeah, like a super good like twenty five damage turn. But if they like, if they've played against Katsu and know how to block, same thing against Dory, they know how to play against this hero. Which yeah. at Worlds, I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt to say they probably know how to. Play They'll know what to block. Heroes. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think that uh, Fi is just a lot more explosive that way and can probably outvalue very well. He also has a pretty good fridge, right? So you got to remember that he's he runs Furnace. He can run Shuko, he can run uh, some D-Reacts, and he puts mm -hmm. up a pretty good fight into Bravo. Like, when you play him mid-range, I like his odds against Bravo. I don't like him that much into Azalea. I think Azalea is pretty well into Fi. Yeah. Um, and the dash matchup can kind of go e either way, but mm -hmm. on in general, I think he is explosive enough that I think the people that are bringing Fi to this event are targeting certain decks. So they're targeting a lot of Dromai Bravo players that they feel favored into. And that's going to be their main goal. So they yeah. might, you know, Makes sense. if they can get to a top eight and get like a full Dromai span and they, they might found the sweep. winning strategy to Dromai, yeah. Exactly. Um, and with, with Dromai's kind of, um, you know, she hasn't really risen in popularity, but since the other top dog Lexi is gone, Fi might have a happier place in this meta right now. Yeah, yeah. Lexi just shat, shat on Fi. It just wasn't. <laughs> There was, there was no reason to play Fi at that point yeah. because it was like you run into Lexi and you just get demolished because they have disruption and damage. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, well, yeah. cool. So I'm, I'm between A and B tier, uh, bottom of A or high B. I, I think below A is probably fine since he's good into a few of the I top heroes. The world's, I think for the world's meta, I'm okay with putting him into A because he also has some like pretty good game into like random decks that might be coming to target Dromai. Like, I like Fi into Reinar. Reinar too, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I, I think Fi into Icelander, depending on, it depends a lot on how the Icelander is building. Mm -hmm. um, but with enough blues, I think Fi will be fine. I think into Katsu is actually just pretty funny. I think mm -hmm. it really just depends on who's going second and who can like <laughs> get that value faster. Yeah, um, it's a race. But he's, he's, a, he's a fast deck who can be like fairly consistent if he wants to be. So yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I like right. putting him like a full thing above dash, but we're, we'll do a disclaimer at the end saying like dash really does depend on the pilot and the build and your strength of schedule. So dash yeah. could be an A for all we know. Just that, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Speaking of Icelander. Um, well, Icelander yeah. is so dependent on the pilot that she's so hard to put on a rating thing because um good icelanders will top all the time right <laughs> with strength of schedule yeah with yeah. with like a good gem schedule they will do well um yeah but it's so hard to like generically put icelander in one of these ranks because i've seen excellent icelander players and i've mm -hmm. seen garbage icelander players however at worlds you would assume that these players bringing icelander would probably be at the top of their game and they're bringing Icelander because they think Icelander can do very well. Uh, I think your Dromai matchup is super odd in mm -hmm. that I've kind of seen it go both ways, but I've usually seen Dromai take it out other than a couple instances. Uh, but that will really depend on the build and what, they, what they're right. packing for that matchup. Like if Dromai is running, how many blues Dromai is running? If they're running blues, right? If they're running like full sand cover and, and decks like that, uh, how many sigil? If they're running the full sigil sand cover package, and what they're really teching for. I don't think that I don't think many dromas are teching that much for Icelander unless they're specifically thinking about it. Yeah. Uh I would I would be among the I would probably try to tech more for things like Dash and Bravo over things like Icelander. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, I think Icelander didn't gain any power. However, Lexi not being there is a boon for Icelander. Right. Um Right, that is true. So I will say for the world's meta, I think B is fine however i think this hero can be s tier in the right hands and the same okay. thing goes with dash right like i think yeah um one of the players who's about battle and merrick kemp um mm -hmm. won the calling on dash that player is an s tier dash player or like like <laughs> yeah. a, a to s on the right schedule right like this this is nothing to do with uh the player this is mainly like an open in the format what we've seen so just a bit yep. of a disclaimer here i agree so we'll maintain that disclaimer for both dash and icelander currently um that's where yeah. the the high B is kind of where that disclaimer is. <laughs> All right. Kano. Kano. Um, I mean... Kano I, is Kano. I think I played a Kano, and <clears throat> I think I was just boost dash, and that just that was an easy just run over kind I of think, situation. I think Kano, Kano just gets run over by aggro decks, and I think yeah. that Dromai can go super fast nowadays. That um, That's right. It's more aggressive now. You're running a lot more of like the snatches, like the cards that just gain value on hit. It's kind of hard for yeah. Kano to really maintain his... Um, you know his board state like building it's a problem like with your epots and stuff and then once you get mm. there you're probably dead already so it's 
you have to really yeah. draw the right stuff early with Kano. You got to see your your power cards early. If you don't, you just lose. So yeah, I think yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's fair. Yeah. Into into like dash, uh, into Azalea, into Fi, even Dromai. I'm not like super happy about that matchup. I'm probably okay into things like Bravo. Bravos, yeah. That was Kano, uh, Assassin, things like that. But like the, mm -hmm. these are not necessarily heroes you're going to be seeing that much of. A Rhinar, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's not or katsu possibly but the, these aren't the matchups i'm expecting to see a ton of and so for that reason for this particular event i'd probably shove him in c tier trip sure. i'm okay with that maybe above bolton i mean he has more of uh... yeah, they're, the, they're the same they're the same yeah he has more spike potential he has yeah, more like yeah, yeah. i could spike this event and for people who don't really know how to play into him he yeah. might have an upper hand uh but that's Bol rare like, in the world like, setting yeah. of course bolton just kind of you know no, no no real edge there so okay Cool. Uh, so Katsu, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of some good a lot of good stuff coming no, you're out. Not, you're not putting him in an S tier. <laughs> there is no way in hell he's an S tier. He How just has too many clunky ass hands. Um, I yeah. would put him in B tier, honestly. I don't. I don't. I don't even. Yeah, like I don't. <laughs> no, honest, honestly, I, I don't. I don't even think. I don't think think high B. You know the issue with Katsu that I have is here. he's. He's been on the radar for a bit too long for my liking. Okay. People know Katsu's a threat. Even back from Canadian Nats, for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. I mean, there were two Katsus in uh, top four in Balhar in Vancouver. Uh, people know this deck exists. And the issue is that when this deck is on fire, it's on fire. But the lows are so low. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> we've seen a few you draw, like, on, uh, blue, in person. Blue, yeah, like blue, blue ancestral something. It was just like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Like the the deck just not cooperate sometimes. And I think what Katsu can do some very uh, unfair things. Mm -hmm. Your fairness is still a little too high compared yeah. to some okay. of these other decks. Um, that being said, I think the Bravo matchup can be quite good. I think your Azalea matchup's not very good, uh, which is a bit of an issue if you're going to be seeing a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. I think your Dromai matchup is not nearly as good as people thought it was. I think your Fi right. matchup... Your Fi is your... a little better than, than uh, Katsu in that case. I think your Fi is probably about 50-50. It depends on who's going second and who, like, does yeah. it. Or I meant if you're... And... If you're you'd rather play Fi into Dromai is what I was trying to say. So if you've got to pick a ninja to go into Dromai, Fi is probably your best your best choice. Yeah. I think your Icelander matchup can be okay. Uh, I can It could also be bad, depending on if Icelander could get out channels and blizzards. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the dash matchup particularly well it really depends on the build okay but dash or dash io for that matter dash io just can outrace you just right straight up like the yeah. value is so good it's funny how um, that's changed because katsu has always looked at as the hero that can like really you know de like take the dash down right because of all the pressure yeah um but it's mainly because it's, it's, it, it's mainly it was like a hybrid dash that couldn't block properly because mm -hmm. dash didn't run that much armor now these dash io decks just run at you even, even harder because now you just run <laughs> Uh, twin drive high octane off of blue and another boost yeah. zero cost boost and you're hitting them for like on a good turn katsu on like a, a above average turn katsu could only hope for that kind of thing whereas yeah. it's a lot it's more pretty accessible consistent dash with, with dash yeah <clears throat> yeah I, I would say so so yeah okay i'm on board i think yeah, yeah i didn't really know i just saw him do really well at you know our the, the events <laughs> we were there in person but yeah. yeah, the other right. events, they, they kinda, like Callings smashed. and the um, Battle Hardens that weren't there. Yeah. Um, Don't have much Katsu. I haven't really seen that much of Katsu. Yeah, not really, like, particularly yeah. always strong. Uh, not not too much of a big reason unless you really like Katsu to bring it to Worlds. Yep, sounds good. Okay, uh, moving on to Leviah. Um, a lot of promise. Oh, a lot of promise, but a bit of a letdown in the end. <laughs> I remember, remember when um, Blasmophet non marvels like a hundred bucks the non the yeah i know well you're talking about the, the um Levi, like Legendary. awakened or no, redeemed. Levi redeemed yeah, yeah Levi i redeemed. know that was when i was trying to buy one for 100 bucks and then yeah i remember now 40 canadian. 30 maybe yeah, asterisk canadian, canadian dollars that's right like more like 80 us money but, money but now you know now we're down to like 30 bucks so the card it might yep. just be more printed you know we're not more printed but more open so there's more available but also the hype really crashed with Leviah. Uh, which is a shame. Yeah. She's so she's so fun to play, so cool. But I think in this meta, she's, I mean, she she's maybe okay into Dromai. That's all, one thing I'll say. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I agree. I I think though, if you are, 
if you're really just worried about drum line, just bring Rhinar, honestly. Rhinar I don't even think is Rhinar's a little better. Out of a choice. Yeah, I think because <clears throat> we'll get into Rhinar in a minute, obviously, but I think if you're looking at playing Brute, uh, your main pro with Levial is the explosiveness, right? Like you were just so much more aggressive with uh, Blasmo Fett. Mm. Um, yeah. That... Um, also consistency. Uh, not consistency. Um, kind of Definitely not consistency. How... No, I won't say that. <laughs> Sorry. I meant to say your damage potential. Uh, what's the term? You... The amount of damage you can do with the amount of pitch you have available is better. Um, so your value. Just, your, just your value. She has value. higher value damage, um, which I guess in in turn means that on average you'll be dealing more damage per turn. But Reiner has consistency sure. and he has explosiveness. Uh, whenever you draw your Blood Rush, right? At least you have that going for you. Whereas Lava, you have to wait for the right time. You might miss your window completely if they deal enough damage mm -hmm. to you that you can't block out. Like if you go below 13 health, there goes your Blasma Fit, right? It's like... There are there yeah. are there's a lot of counterplay for for yeah. being into you Levaya. might yeah like you might see uh, a Leviah do like I wouldn't be surprised to see a four Leviah on day one just get like slaughtered <laughs> on yeah. day two kind of thing like they just had a good strength of schedule they mm -hmm. had some good rolls and they just ran over some people we could do that with Leviah it's possible it's super possible yeah. um but like as a whole I don't think that's what you're counting on. I think mm -hmm. you have to play more of a mid rangey game. I think too many of these heroes just like blank Leviah. They're just like, uh, other than Droma, I, I don't think I want to see Leviah into a lot of these different heroes. No. Um, yeah. So, well, you can you can run them over. You can also just lose. Especially Icelander, um, too. Like, what are you going to do against an Iceland? <laughs> yeah. Just run the club, it, I guess. You're, I don't know. Yeah, you're just doomed, honestly. Yeah. Um, Yep. So yeah, I I think Leviathan is like okay, but like I don't even think there are that many great matchups outside of Dromai that you'd really want to play Leviathan into. Yep, I agree. Okay, <clears> here's <throat> an interesting one. Uh, we got Max. Has so he? Think it's B? I has, think it's has he done tier. anything? I'm just kind of wondering. Mm, I think he top aided he something. Top aided once. Uh, I think yeah. he top aided the calling. Yeah, he top aided the calling Melbourne. I think Melbourne. Oh, okay, into, okay. Uh, so that's actually not that bad. It was a very specific build. It was a Nitro Mechanoid Max build. Oh, it seemed yeah. to be very all in on Nitro Mechanoid Max. That's I think fun. he just got he just got annihilated by Dash IO in that top eight game that I saw. <laughs> I think it was yeah. a bit of a slaughter. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's not even like an aggressive remember. Max deck. It's really just to build the construct. So, um, yeah. can he be as aggressive as a Fi or a Katsu if you don't run the construct deck? I don't think he's more aggressive than Dash. Yeah. Which, which is kind of the, the key, like that's your difference. Like if you're playing Max, why are you playing Max? It's like okay, right. so you get to create hyper drivers. Like, old yeah. old Dash gets to start with an item. New Dash gets to get items off the top. You could milk that all game for anything, like yeah. action points, damage potential. Max is creating hyper drivers. So okay, okay, and then you it have Banksy, two which is like to do fine. It, which is kind Bank of kind of expensive too if you're an aggressive deck. <laughs> Yeah, Banksy as a weapon seems so fair compared to Pistol. Like, as far as, like, in a classic constructed way, Draft's a little bit different, but, like, yeah. in classic constructed, a <clears throat> symbiosis shot, you can load that thing with, like, a bunch of items and shoot, like, three, it's, four it's times free. for free. Yeah. And you don't need to have boosted. You don't need to have, like... Cranked. Oh, cranked. Sorry, you don't need to have cranked. Well, you need a boost for max ability, but the crank, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Um, There's no, like, pre preconceived... And if you want to fire the pistol, just fire the pistol. Like it's yeah. not, yeah. When one of them you can't load that well, but it, then it's free. But it just looks so fair in comparison. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I agree. Um, yeah, it's still not really found out, I guess, or not really solved because the, the construct deck is pretty interesting. Yeah. But that that itself has its own set of flaws as well, right? So it's like maybe if people don't know what yeah. you're doing, he has an edge. But at the same time, neither of his paths people... are really that strong. Yeah, I'm not convinced there's going to be that many people at Worlds that are going to put that much time into this deck. Yeah. Um, unless they feel like it's very good across the board. I also don't think it's that great into, like, Dromai. Um, mm -hmm. Like, what? Kylo Ray just uh, threatened Kylo Ray. Still your hyper drive. Uh, it was pretty funny. It doesn't stop you, but you just create more. But it's it kind of funny. Yeah, it's very um, funny. Yeah, I think if you have to put the effort into learning either Dash IO or, or Max, you'll put it into Dash IO. I think there's, I think there's more, like, matchups across the board I'd want... Um, Dash IO for so, yeah. Oh, Prism, Prism, oh, Prism. Um, oh, man, I, I don't think anyone's Prism. No, I probably not. No, I, I don't. I don't think people care enough at the moment. At the I don't moment, think, yeah. Well, the thing is, your Dromai matchup is miserable. So, like, why would you bring this deck? Like, your yeah. Dromai matchup is is dog. Like, yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> in what world would you bring Prism if you think Dromai in any sense of the word is going to be a big? Mm -hmm. Which we've seen the events. 
Dromai is a top two, if not the first deck mm -hmm. that people are going to want to bring. So yep. I don't know why people would bring it. I think it can do okay into Bravo if you're running like aura build, like if you're running like the like heavy control stack build. Yeah, you can still. If you're do running that. like, yeah, if you're running like the aggressive uh, uh, angel, but not angel. Well, I guess kind of yeah. angel herald ish Angels, build. Angels, yeah. The Bravo just starts popping your shit. Like it, it's not that great, uh, <laughs> yeah. and you just get run over by like. And if you're running the control thing, you just get run over by like Phi and decks like that. They mm -hmm. just like did that before, so yeah. it's. I don't really think people are going to be looking at this deck super seriously. I um, agree. We just move on to Reinar. Yeah, Reinar, okay. Um, I mean, he's happier that Lex is gone. He's got more. I mean, he, room. yeah, he, he wasn't B before. He was a solid C tier in like most of our videos. So I think getting yeah. give him the upgrade to B is pretty reasonable. It's kind of reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's had, I think he was in the top eight for the calling um, type A, I think. Um, so there was a showing of right. Reinar in top eight. So. He has game, and I think the top eight was just run with overrun with Lexis too. It was like four Lexis, and it was like one Reinar in there. Yeah. So he must have had a more defensive yeah. build, probably, to be able to compete with the Lexis. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, he can do terrible things into Dromai. Dromai, you know, yeah. has <laughs> has a lot to be feared. Has, has a lot yeah, to fear when like you go Matt into Harden it. Yeah. And such, yeah, doing 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 definitely better. Um, I think the one thing with Reinar is people don't like Reinar, which is interesting. <laughs> it's like not I like him. if you. Well, th that's the thing. You like him, but like when you look at the Welcome to Wraith heroes that people are willing to pick up, mm -hmm. so many people are just super against playing Reinar. And one of the main reasons is scabs. Like that that piece that piece of equipment can just, just the luck ruin. factor. He has a lot of forced luck. Sometimes it's called right. Just like if you want to extract value off this hero, you mm -hmm. have to force a scabs roll, which is just it's like you know. Part. Yeah, when you want to like savage feast into like something yeah, else yeah. or, or it's like dicks like that. And then you're really only good over like your your only above rate move that you could do is it's blood rush. Scabs and oh yeah, and of course play blood rush. But when you play it, it's amazing. It's like not just above mm. rate, it is like astronomically what if you're above rate. Decks with like disruption. And yeah, if like, you're against it's, like C Pavel or the like Yeah. Then you're sad. I think <laughs> you're very sad. I think I think Reinar is actually a little bit higher on this list because Reinar is mm -hmm. a very good target deck. I think Reinar is very good against dash. I think um, mm -hmm. yeah, he has game into dash for sure. You know what? I put him in A tier, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why oh. I'm putting this green man spicy in spicy pick. Okay, let's that's gonna be my spicy pick. I I have high hopes for Reinar. I hope people bring <laughs> Reinar because if you look at his matchup spread, very good into Dromai. Like mm -hmm. next good into Dromai. Yep. Uh he. He takes away your defense, he has poppers, and he has multiple action points. Like, mm -hmm. this is very good. Uh, into Bravo he has is a, fine. He has a reasonable game into Bravo. Not saying Bravo can lose. Like, it's not saying, like, it's super favored. It is a bit skill intensive, but yep. at the end of the day, I actually think uh, Reinar has the edge in that matchup. Probably about 55%. I agree. Um, um, Bravo being more defensive classically, and Intimidate being a way mm -hmm. to get over defensive options. Correct. So, yep. very good Correct. into defensive decks, for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, and it depends on the build. And then you have a card called Arc Smash. Really good against mm. Mechanologists. Specifically yeah. the Dash IO with a bunch of like mm. items out there. Um yeah. against like regular dash, like induction pistol dash. Uh, yeah, Arc I will Smash, I will say it's better into the regular dash. Dash IO I think sure. gets items out too quickly and too easily. Uh and you're wasting a whole turn to play the Arc Smash. I think it costs three too. So you know it's not ideal, but you can still level the playing field you, but you it's could like do, you it, could do some pretty good stuff there she's kind of hard to their, um, hard to limit yeah yeah you could you could do um some pretty pretty nice stuff with arc smash and i think that yeah you don't like Phi. i think your azalea yeah. matchup can be pretty good honestly i, I don't think it's yeah. great like i think it's like pretty not good on general but i think it can be uh, softened a bit with a, a bit more things like maybe red unmovables and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Azalea doesn't really block. That's the kind of key part. So mm -hmm. uh, I think, still think it's probably better for Azalea. Probably good for Phi. I think your, your Ice Thunder matchup is pretty, pretty reasonable. I yep. think your Katsu matchup is kind of bad also. Uh, so there are matchups where like... But these, these are not the matchups you're really expecting to see the most. So I think out of the matchups, if you're expecting to see Throw My Bravo Dash, I think Reinar is a great pick. And I think because it's only eight rounds of CC... I hope it's eight. I'm hoping I'm not like speaking on my ass here, but I'm pretty sure it's it's four, <laughs> well, three, either four, because there's no blitz. Between six there's no blitz eight, anymore. Right? No, there's no blitz. There used to be five rounds of blitz and then two Swiss. Yeah, that and was a mistake. Five, like, it's like five rounds of CC, so it was like five, six, five. 
Uh, as that bats? maybe adds up. I guess because Blitz is shorter. Yeah, I I, I suppose it's between like six and eight. Oh no, or maybe like four. Or maybe like four, four six five. I, I don't know. Whatever. Point is that there's um <clears throat> only slightly more than half are the games are CC right. So mm. if you could bring that and the three heroes you see a shit ton of those eight rounds are those heroes and you have a plan for it. Yeah. And then you get a good top eight bracket and you don't screw up draft. Shit, you can win worlds on right. All right, that'd be <laughs> That's hilarious. always an asterisk if you don't screw up draft. I think. Yeah, if you don't screw up draft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Riptide. Okay. Um, oops. Nope. Let's, let's go smooth that back. Uh, <laughs> my finger, my, my cursor was on the... Uh... <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, Riptide. I mean, enough said, I guess. Just Yeah. You know, it's funny. I think Riptide kind of deserves to be a bit higher... Than, I think he at person? least has a win condition. That's true. Okay. I think he's above Arachne too, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't even think he's a bad hero. I think people just like don't care. Like I think it's yeah, like care. everyone looks at this hero and is just like, yeah. why bother putting time into this hero? Yeah. Uh, when there's other options available. Now I think his main issue is like you could fatigue this hero, which is kind of scary if you're playing Riptide. Uh I think you have mm -hmm. uh not you don't have as many ways to close out a game. Like you don't have easy access to a dominate. Uh, you don't have super wide easy turns. So compared to the other rangers I'm talking about, uh, I think your like your matchup into like Droma is pretty bad. Your Bravo yeah. matchup's not great. Like I, I don't think there's a reason to bring him to Worlds, but I think in general he's not that bad of a hero. I think he just needs to. He got mm -hmm. intoxicating shot. That does something, right? It does like something. Blue, arrow blue, does something. blue zero for four or something like that. It does something. It, it does something. It's not, it does not something. awful. Yeah. Um, yeah, for now, let's just leave him there. Sure. Teclo Vossum, I think he's uh, D tier at the moment. Yeah, um, maybe just below Riptide. This hero, uh, I don't know. yeah, his, his, uh, <laughs> he's just get, he just has just so many problems in this meta. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think, like, disruption hurts him. I think, like, his game plan of singularity is, like, questionable at best. Like, yeah, you can get it off and maybe you can win. And you can boost um, it off, too. So, like, that's yeah. always, like, you have one copy of it. And if your game plan is to boost and play items or armor from your banish zone, uh, you're running yeah. a huge risk of banishing yeah. your win condition. So, it's kind of scary. Yeah, the issue... Exactly. So, the issue is your consistency because it's a legendary. Singularity is a legendary uh, mm -hmm. keyword. One of... Unlike something... Yeah, unlike something like um, Mechanoid, which is you can have three of. Mm -hmm. Right? So... And it's three block. So I believe I'm pretty sure it's a three block. Singularity so, like, is a three block, yeah. No, I'm talking about um. Oh, me mechanoid, yeah, I believe it's three block. Yeah, me nectar mechanoid is a pretty sure it's a three block. So like, mm -hmm. if you go for that plan, I think Max is probably a safer bet if that's mm -hmm. what you really want. If you do. want to build Exodia at the end, right? Yeah, and it's a lot of resources to build Singularity. Like these mm -hmm. equipment pieces take four, and the ones you want to build it with, like the blue majestic, the, the, the four four yeah, resources a piece. Four. Like, you, these are not cheap. That's why you gotta play your you scrap trader, <laughs> scrap trader into an extra action point somehow to gain four. If you oh, you have to find it. You have to scrap trader into right Tekla Boston's ability, pitch three for that, Correct. play out an item or uh, from, from Banish Zone costing four. Scrap trader does not have go again. Yep, no, yeah. it's true. So it's kind of hard I to think do. He, I think he needs a better win condition before he gets higher on this tier list because right now he just seems like he's like trolling down there looking at armor and just sort of re-equipping stuff tur tur turtling up and just like re-equipping yeah, re things armor breaks okay yeah. put a new one on and you're not really going anywhere um i will say though if you right can now, get off those big tanks at the end uh you're yeah, probably okay four evos yeah, yeah if you get the four evos you don't have the singularity there there is a key point where maybe you just don't need singularity and maybe you just run backup protocols and like you do you do and you just get oh, to just that to get, point get them However, back from the, the graveyard yes however i think it takes too long for yeah. that plan to work. And if they disrupt you yeah. and you have to run D-Reacts, you have to balance it they on like a knife's edge. Disrupt you, they run at you. <laughs> just a bunch of dragons or fire, Katsu, yeah. Azalea. I mean, disruption is everywhere, I think, in this top. The dash IO. Yeah, I mean, you have Dash IO as well, which runs at you. Uh, Azalea Bravo. disruption, Bravo mm -hmm. disruption. Uh, you just, there's nothing you're really good into at this point. Like, you're essentially Correct. a combo deck because you're assembling pieces for Singularity. Correct. Um, so yeah, I agree. D tier, I think we've talked enough about him. He's probably just going to stay there for a little Zuri. while. Yeah, Zuri's really good. I don't know. Uh, a oh, minimum, I would say. Uh, no, no, no. I disagree with that. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Zuri's main purpose was Lexi. <laughs> Let's let's look at it. From oh, that's a, a good point. Here. <laughs> yeah, this that's a good point. Fun. I forgot the standings I've seen are all with Lexi in mind. So that's that's who, true. Who are you? 
who are you beating out of these top heroes? <laughs> okay. You're, well, you're, you're Dromai not Magic beating Dromai. Right? Um, you can beat Dromai. On the contract Azuri build, you can definitely beat Dromai if they're not expecting you. Because if they don't know what Azuri you're on. Because you flip Azuri, you could be on contract or you could be on redline aggro. You okay. could be on either. Yeah. If you're on redline aggro, like you could beat Dromai that way or you could beat contract ways. So they can mm. trip up, of course, but um, your Bravo Sorry. matchup is not, is not good. Uh, they have D-Reacts and such. I mean, yeah. You're, you're, um, your your um, minor matchup really depends. Yeah, uh, that one's you know, what build you're on. If you're on, con if you're on contract, it's not going to be great. Yeah. Uh, at least you can disrupt Reinar when he does go off, when he has his blood rush. I guess you, you can do some, some nasty stuff. Like, you can um, um, play this shakedown to get his, you know, if he has blood rush in hand, you can take that away. Pretty good stuff. Yep. But, but like, Reinar's Reinar, not really Reinar what you're looking to beat anyway. <laughs> and you, you have no, Reinar runs too. Rex, yeah. It's not a deck that doesn't run D-Rex. So maybe Defy, you could try to take an Art of War or something. I I, yeah. I think there are, like, Lexi was the main reason to run this deck. And yeah, maybe Azuri has play into, like, Dash, like old Dash that's boosting a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe new Dash, maybe, like, Dash IO, maybe. But it might be too fast for Azuri. Azuri doesn't have a lot of armor either. Yeah, like, Azuri doesn't really have a fridge. Azuri can um, be run at pretty easily. So... She has effective um, disruption. However, I don't. Uh, I think it's a little bit too fair into these decks. So, fair enough. I'm okay with B tier. Low, honestly, it's high C tier for me. I don't even think it's B tier. I don't even okay. think she deserves to be on the list with those. I mean, we can, we can put B bottom, B bottom of Bs. Probably more comfortable. I, I, I honestly would rather play Dory in a lot of these matchups. Uh, even oh, okay. Max, the Nitro, the Nitro Mechanoid build, at least top aided. Uh, <laughs> I think now that Lexi's oh yeah, you don't really think she's happy. gonna be like top eight contention now that Lexi's gone? No. No, I would be in insanely surprised to see Azuri. Um, like top eight. I don't, I don't know. I, like, what's her free match? Like, what's the matchup she's looking for? <laughs> dash. Even I don't even know if that's true. Like, it really depends on the dash deck. Mm. Like, what if it's like a? I, I really don't know. I think dash has too many aggressive tools to just outrun Azuri. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what it is. Uh, Viscera. Okay. Yep, move on to the the rune blades, the, the lonely rune blades. Oh my gosh! I mean, Viscera is never like that awful, I guess. But of course, he always has the rune blade tax, and I don't really know if he's that good into Dromai. I mean, Dromai can struggle because of the yeah, lack of blue. I so I, I think that Dromai, but like, yeah. what else are you reasonable into? Yeah, it's true. I mean, you're probably pretty even, I guess, into Bravo, maybe. It, de it depends. It depends on, like, how the Bravo's built. I think there's there's Bravo builds that can just straight-up fatigue Viscerai. Like, Viscerai oh, yeah. is remembrance. Yeah, yeah it's true. All the blues are so yeah, hard to, to get over. Yeah, you can run Lantern, too. Um, I mean, not that you would really need it, but... I, I, I like it. I like yeah, I like Viscerai's matchup into Bravo in general, but, like, it doesn't mean it's highly favored. It's probably uh, close I, to 50, I think 50. He's, I think he's pretty pretty similar to like Azuri and uh, Kano and these guys in C tier. Mm -hmm. So I think he's probably sitting in C tier. Yeah. Oops. Um, Did it again. Yeah. Okay. I I agree. Uh, it was either below Katsu or maybe somewhere above Kano here. It's just like and then like Azalea like five just outruns him and Azalea just has disruption. Yeah. It's like yeah, I think I think he can beat Dromai. I think he has like good on hits. I think he has like good. He can have good matchups. Uh, I think your Ice Lander matchup is kind of sus. I don't, I don't think your Dash matchup is yeah. good here. Because um, Dash has a shit ton of blues, and if they need to block, they can do it. Especially like Tree Frog Dash. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm okay with that, I think. Um, he is the lone survivor Rune Blade <laughs> after like the, the LL form or the LL um, announcements for Briar. So, I mean. Yeah. I'm um, okay with this, I guess. Yeah. All right. And set. Now, as much as I would love to put Vincent in B tier, I think she's solidly in C tier for this event. Oh, I know you. Uh, I wish. Yeah. Um, um, probably yeah. not as good as Viscerai, right? Viscerai probably has. No, she's better than Viscerai. No, nah, no. Nah, oh, don't really? give her that much. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't expect she that. She's pummeled, my friends. No. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah. Her, her, her efficiency and value is actually like not bad. Right. Uh, right. So you play a better mid range game than Viscerai can. Viscerai's mid range game is bad. What do you do off a two card Viscerai hand? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, okay. like, there's there's you know more options with Vincent. Um, and Vincent, I think, can weather disruption a little bit better because uh, you know 
She has a fridge. It's not great. She has a fridge, but also if Viscerai, if awesome. you take away Viscerai's one key piece in his hand, his one attacker's one non-attack, um, you know, his, mm. his turn's over. Yeah. At least Vincent can banish, prepare for the next turn, take some blood debt, you know, there's some counterplay. Yeah. yeah, she can play a different kind of game, which Viscerai cannot. Yeah. Um, and she has a bigger fridge because she can run Husk. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when Husk is about to die, you can block for a bajillion. Yeah. And then that could be your pivot turn, right? If you're, you're taking shit and you're waiting for the pivot, mm -hmm. that could be your pivot, right? Like, she she does have the tools. She's missing a couple key cards, I think, that she needs in some slots. Yeah. Uh, a couple more blood dead cards, like non-attack action, stuff like that, that she needs to be more consistent. Uh, she still has that problem where I've drawn a bunch of... I've definitely drawn at least one all non-attack hand or mm -hmm. one all attack action had the game it does happen pretty often yep uh, at least once a game so she does have that consistency issue i don't know why you would run this hero for this event i don't know what <laughs> yeah. you're targeting i think this i think Vincent's actually pretty good into um mm. Dromai. Dromai? yeah because um, you have the dual damage plus you have more poppers than viscerai does uh i believe on average a lot more poppers. yeah yeah a lot so, of your the thing is like a lot of those are also like your your, your win condition yeah yeah that's true but hey if you gotta yeah. get rid of a dragon and dromai's turn you can yeah it, it's true and like dromai doesn't really have active easily active unless she gets like ash wings uh which yeah. you can pop with your flail or your scepter i believe right i'm pretty sure um so yeah i think you can do some work with that uh or you can even go nebula blade like i like to do Mm -hmm. Take care of big dragons and get a room chan on hit, which is pretty right. nice. Yeah, you can take out I think uh, Mirror Guy as a four health dragon. Um, yeah, so you can take that out in one swing. Not bad. Yeah, I don't like I don't like the Bravo matchup. I don't like the Fi matchup. I don't like the Azalea matchup's okay mm -hmm. because because of the husk. So if she like tries True. to do stuff, but the thing is your disruption. If you're starting to look blood and you get disrupted, you get to take yeah. damage. Yeah, same I problem. I like the matchup a lot. I like the Islander matchup quite a bit. Mm, okay. I think that's actually a pretty reasonable matchup uh, because of Runegate. Uh, it does help you insulate from a lot of that and you do run a fair right. amount of boost. That is true. Yeah. Um, yep. like your ninja matchup catch kind of whatever. It really depends <laughs> yeah. on who, who gets stuff first. Um, yeah. I might just rebalance this a little bit. Maybe Bravo can just join there at the top, bottom of S tier. Um... <laughs> Every time I put Bravo to S tier, I feel like it's just copium. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, if he's top of A, he might as well be S tier at that point. Like, I think if nobody knew Bravo was coming, he might be S tier. But I think everybody knows people are going to play this hero. Like, some people are going to be on this hero. It feels weird just having one hero in S tier. Does that mean she's just well, the Lexi, obvious pick? Lexi was, Lexi was on S tier for a long time by herself. Okay. And we were just like, if you're not playing Lexi, you're playing against the meta. Okay. I bumped what this side up here to bottom of B, though. I don't know. You're, in, you're very nice, although I don't know if, I don't know if it's correct but what 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 is correct what is correct that's with, right you know yeah I, um, I guess that's it there you have it look okay i'm, I'm keeping, I'm keeping Ryan R and A. I don't give a shit what that's people so say i think i think this should hero i just is, shy play reiner <laughs> i think i you know on, honestly <laughs> i think you should play reiner and just bring it to like the cc doubles events or whatever and just like be like i'm a roll i'm gonna roll roll up the rib to win the yeah, why not um I think he is poised to be a like good a, a secret or... secret killer. He's like kind of in the shadows waiting for the spotlight. Yeah. I don't think he's much of a secret anymore cuz um but I think he is yeah. on people's radar. Yeah. And I think people will not have that much time to practice against Reinar nor do <laughs> many people on their teams have good players that play Reinar. Reinar mains and I think that alone cuz everybody's got like draw my mains and yeah, like probably Azalea Dash. They have players that play these. I don't know that many good Reinar mains. Um, I think was it uh, was New Tan or uh, was New from? Uh... That's, that's the artist. Oh, that's the artist. <laughs> um, what was the, there was a player in? Uh, Chandler's pretty good at uh, Chandler Toe's pretty good on Reinar. He always he always he, probably, he won the calling on Reinar. I think Chandler won the. Calling oh, okay, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like, and, uh, like I just want I just want to pull it up real quick. I was looking at this earlier. I think it was the calling type A. I think it was here yeah that guy this guy this guy yeah all right uh, you well, know maybe we can look at this later <laughs> but yeah um, um yeah if you can do stuff my my dark horse to win is definitely gonna be radar okay i think fi is also a dark horse sure uh, yeah okay i agree with that yeah i, mean, I was a betting man i would bet on drill <laughs> but 
It really depends because it's a mixed event. So I don't know how these players are going to do well in draft. Drum I could four all the Dromas could four zero for all I know and zero through the drafts. I don't know. Yeah, it's really random. It's true. Yeah, I think we have to assume consistent drafting ability across the board at this point uh, because can can you though? Well, I think you have to because then then we're well, factoring that into the CC performance and that you know we should probably just be unbiased on on the CC performance. Yeah. We're talking um, about the we're talking about the eight rounds. Yeah, no, that's fair. Exactly. But, yeah, this, okay. this, this is a list. I agree stamp of approval even though it's by no means backed by highly empirical data just semi- i mean the, the problem semi- is we have not seen an event yet without lexi i think i think she just rotated out uh because she was valid up until oh, like the, the, november yeah. was it november was it the college melbourne oh the college melbourne no oh is that right oh melbourne was november 5th uh um, melbourne let's see i want to just find out Yes, last week. Melbourne was on the fifth, but same weekend as the uh, Vancouver Battle Hard, right? Yeah, so, it was the same weekend. Lexi there's, was there's, Lexi was. Oh, there's there. one Lexi. Oh, yeah. there was. Okay, so there's no. Yeah, so we don't really have any data without okay. Lexi. So, you know, who yeah. knows? But this is just our our speculation, our uh, I guess um, educated guess on where things are going to go for the educated. world's meta. We are educated, but yeah, that was it. If you <laughs> like the content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, from wherever you're watching in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, oh, if you're in the worlds, me and Rob will both be in worlds wearing our That's hoodies. True. If I remember to pack it, uh, we should. should pack it. Yeah, we should. We probably will have some stuff to give away. Maybe we still have promos. Oh, no. yeah, we still have promos and stuff. So if you see one of our players playing on one of the mats or in the hoodies, mm. uh, feel free to you know come up, say hi. We're fairly friendly, ish. Depending depending on what time of the day you see us. Uh, I need my coffee first, but I'll yeah, have it before the event. We'll have it before. The, but <laughs> yeah. with that. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye for now.